Welcome to Hacking My SQL for Big Data. In this talk, I will show you what you can do to make my SQL capable of working with bigger data sets and make my SQL work with probably ways you didn't know were possible. I, I won't cover everything because we only have 20, 30 minutes, but you will have a good enough overview of what um, what's contained in such a appliance if you want to go this way. So table of contents, I will start by introducing myself, introducing the topic, and then we'll talk about what is big data a little bit for you to understand what it is, why you should choose MySQL, MariaDB, or Percona server when working with bigger data sets, the role of MySQL, how it all looks like when working with bigger data sets, how to work with MySQL for bigger data sets, and some things you should know. So a little bit about me before we, we before we start. My name is Lucas. As you probably already know if you're watching this talk, I'm a security guy and I'm also a database guy. I run a data breach search engine. I do YouTube uh, videos about databases and I also do other things. Um, I also wrote a book with APRES called Hacking MySQL, Breaking, Optimizing, and Securing MySQL for your use case, which is quite a big part of why this talk is uh, named in such a way because I learned a lot and I want to share the things that I know. So what is big data, right? So many people, when we talk about big data, they just say big data that it is something that our normal systems cannot fathom, cannot work with, but what does that necessarily mean, right? That means that essentially we have bigger data sets that might not be feasible to work with in an ordinary programming way. So let's say we have 100 million rows, 200 million rows, and some of our queries might uh, slow down or become infeasible to use when we execute them in a normal fashion. So we may want to pursue some other venues when working with data sets. So what is big data exactly? So in this case, uh, many people obviously consider big data in various ways, but in this case, I will consider anything above or equal to 100 million rows as big data. Um, you also need to make sure that your bigger data set is formatted in an appropriate format if you want to insert these data sets into a database because if you don't have an applicable format, it can be painful as I, as I will later show you. And you will also need to consider your actual use case because um, bigger data sets, you're probably, you're probably working with bigger data sets because you want to achieve something, right? So you need to consider your use case and you need to consider MySQL, does MySQL help that use case as well? So why should you choose MySQL, right, for bigger data sets in the first place, or why MySQL in the first place without bigger data sets? So the first thing you have to keep in mind is that MySQL is not only MySQL. MySQL is MySQL, Percona Server, and MariaDB. They're all flavors of MySQL, and they all kind of work in their own ways. Uh, MySQL, most of MySQL storage engines support ACID, which is atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. And these parameters make sure your data is consistent even in the event of data crashes, power failures, or any such issues. And also the usage of MySQL, it heavily depends on your use case, whether it will help you or not. For some of you, you may make use of uh, mixed stuff. So you may use uh, MongoDB and MySQL. It also heavily depends on your use case. But before deciding to use MySQL, you have to understand its architecture. So first we have maybe storage engines, then we have to consider the file system, and then the hashes and buffers and the connection pool. And there's also parse and the optimizer and the SQL interface. Um, if this looks pretty complex, start from storage engines. So they store all of your data in the first place. Data is stored in data, data files, I mean, Indexes are stored in files as well. Logs mean that if they're scanned through, your data can be restored faster. Parsers, optimizers, and the SQL interface make you execute your queries faster. Caches and buffers also make you execute your queries faster. 
the connection pool makes you connect to your makes you able to connect to your database. So this is why all of these parts are important. Now, for bigger data sets, you see here my website, Breach Directory. I run almost 10 billion rows on MariaDB and MySQL, and I run a data breach search engine. Your use case might, may be a little bit different, but in many cases, uh, queries, especially if you search through bigger data sets, will look something like this. Obviously, I use a loop here, but your your uh, exact query may differ a little bit. But as you can see, you will have select something from some table where something is something, and maybe some limit clause at the end or whatever. And then you do something with the results here. And as you can see, this query doesn't really differ much from the usual queries that you would run when you would run 1,000 or maybe 10,000 rows in MySQL. So everything comes down to configuration and adherence to the prerequisites. So what you need? You need data. If you have big data, obviously, you need some. You have already data. The data is of some class. So maybe it's data from data breaches, maybe it's data from some kind of, I don't know, marketing tool, maybe it's data from another source, maybe it's data about cars, right? You also need a database management system because you will need to store the data somewhere, obviously. And you also need a VPS or a dedicated server because if you work with bigger data sets, shared hosting will not work anymore. For most of you, you can start with a VPS and move into a dedicated server, or if you have already a bigger data set, you will start from a dedicated server in the first place. You also need a backup plan because your data needs to be backed up well, and you also need, in most cases, some luck because if you work with bigger data sets, that's also a necessity. So let's start by your server, right? So if you acquired a VPS or a dedicated server, you didn't so you didn't do so without a reason, right? So you have when in, when you installed MariaDB, Percona server, or MySQL, you had a file called mycnf or my.ini if you run Windows, and that file came with a bunch of parameters. So the parameters you need to give a closer look to would be the InnoDB buffer pool size, the InnoDB log file size, and the InnoDB flush log at transaction commit. Now, we won't get too in-depth into what these parameters do, but remember that all of these three parameters have something to do with the main storage engine within MariaDB, Percona server, or MySQL, which is InnoDB, which is part of why they're called InnoDB something, right? So the first parameter, it ensures that the insertion of your data is as fast as it can get by utilizing the available memory on your server. So if you have, let's say, 32 gigabytes of RAM on your server, if you let's if you put 60 to maybe 80% of RAM available to that parameter, your insert queries will be significantly faster. Log file size makes you able to increase the log file size. And the log file size is necessary for if you have, if you will back up data, MySQL will scan through the log files. And the larger they are, the, the faster your database will be restored. Uh, the third parameter is InnoDB flush log a transaction commit, which makes uh, sure that InnoDB and MySQL in general, your database in general, is ACID compliant. So ACID compliance, as I said already, is basically a thing where if your electricity goes down uh, or if your hardware stops working in the middle of an insert query, the, your database is fine, nothing happens. And it can also be exchanged for speed a little bit. So if you turn the parameter from its default value to one, uh, from its default value of one, to zero or two, you will have more speed, but less data reliability and integrity. Also, you need to take care of other parameters, which will be available in the MySQL documentation or MariaDB documentation, depending on what database management system you will use. Now, after you have indexed, after you have, uh, sorry, set up your parameters within your database, you will need to look into indexing as well. Because indexing, especially if you run search engines, not necessarily data breach search engines, but search engines in general, indexing is what, what's truly going to 
make a difference. So let's start. So what, when and what to index? These are the most important questions people ask when indexing. So first of all, you index when you run select operations on bigger data sets. So that's the first thing. Uh, you index the necessary columns. And again, the question arises, what are necessary columns, which we'll get into in a second. And then how to index, right? So you need to index necessary columns and you need to index when you have bigger data sets with how to index. This is a very good question. And this is um, on the screen right now, I've provided a drawing for you to understand how your indexes work in your database management system. So essentially, how to index depends on the query that you run. So for example, if you have a query like this, you may be able to put an index like this on the, on the table. Because if you put an ID column and the user column in the index, it means that the index is a covering index. And since the index is a covering index, data can be read in, uh, from the index instead of being read from the disk. Obviously, there are many other nuances. For example, my skill determining can the query even use a covering index? And if not, can it use uh, other type of index? And can it perform index scans or other operations? And if not, no index is used and then data is read from the disk. But in any way, indexes help uh, the majority of your search operations. And indexes also hinder inserts, updates, and deletes because data needs to be inserted, updated, or deleted together with the index as well. So aside from indexing, you also need to back up your data. So uh, when backing up bigger data sets, things get a little more interesting because uh, logical backups, when you see, such as you see right here, will likely to work a little bit slower than expected. And that is because um, insert queries, they come with a lot of overhead, right? So MySQL has to consider inserting these queries and somewhere this insert query ends and another bulk insert query begins. MySQL does this with bulk insert queries. So you see commas here. Commas mean a bulk insert query is in use. And when, for example, 10,000, 15,000 of such rows are inserted, then the insert query is restarted and the process goes on again. The problem with this is that I said um, it comes with overhead. So each of the insert query that you just saw comes with overhead. It has to start, it has to check for permissions, it has, open, it has to open tables, it has to initialize, update data, and close tables, free items, and clean up. So each of those, let's say, subtasks take some time, as you can see, some duration, right? So this is, uh, keep in mind, for one single query. So each of these queries will take uh, the specified time that is specified right here. So if you have 100,000 of such insert queries, obviously your, your queries will be a little bit slow and you will need to think of other means to, to insert data. So backups without overhead is possible. And for that, uh, you would have to use raw data instead of backing up logical or physical data, right? So how do you do it? Like logical backups without overhead look like this. There are just raw data sets like IDs and then columns related from the database, right? So column one, column two, column three, column four, column five. This is uh, countries, usernames, uh, genders, and IP addresses. For, for you, it may be different data sets, but it doesn't really matter. So the point is, is that if you back up raw data sets, they won't come with as much overhead as insert queries do. Uh, you can take such backups by running queries like uh, like this one. That is basically select all from your table into out file. Into out file means that basically every row from this table will be residing in this file, and fields will be terminated by a character. There's a bunch of other character, uh, a bunch of other statements you can use to make yourself uh, to make your work easier such as uh, ignore lines or 
maybe back up only certain columns by specifying this, but anyway. Uh, you, these backups can also be restored by running queries like load data in file or load data local in file if that's necessary for you. You specify the file that you just uh, backed up. You basically specify the table of your choice. You specify what the fields are terminated, what character the fields are terminated by. Uh, maybe if you want to ignore some sort of lines, maybe if you want to only restore some data, you, you can specify a column list and so on. There's a bunch of other things you should consider as well. For example, if you have, uh, if you want to update certain column, so these queries will be very useful actually, because uh, if, your if your file, for example, has uh, a lot more rows than your disk can handle, because remember that um, if you, for example, if you after inserting data, if you run alter table queries to update data, for example, add indexes or update some data, right? So alter queries will also make a copy of the table on the disk. And that can become, with bigger data sets, that can become a little bit of a problem. So what you can do is basically create a table with default values in the column. So let's come back and I'll show you. You can create a table with default values like here in a column. And basically then using the load data in file query, you can basically only specify the column that you need to insert to, or you can specify every column except the, that column with the default value because the default value will be pre-filled. And so you will no longer have to update the table and make the copy of the table on the disk. There's also a lot more that can be said about restoring backups and the bigger data sets in general. And this is where I share my knowledge in, in the book. And I also run a database dive YouTube channel. So if you, you are interested in these things, please make sure to give me a follow. And I would like to end with uh, showing a bug that I have found in my SQL. So you see two queries on the screen, right? So this is related to full text indexes in my SQL and all the versions of my SQL, mind you. Uh, this query searches for an account called demo. And this query searches for an email, uh, which is also demo at demo.com in Boolean mode. So if all the query, if all the versions of my SQL are in use, and if this query, um, that is a query with et assigns in Boolean mode, is running, your database might perform slower or crash. Why? Because my SQL works that way, and this is why, and this is the reason you should follow documentation and attend conferences and learn additional things um, as well, because you may come across such things in the future. So thank you a lot for listening, for learning. I hope you learned something new, and it was a pleasure to speak here. Thank you. And I'm open to questions right now if anyone has any. Thank you.